Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Foreman community demo. We'll start today with Ian and he will talk about Scatello. Alrighty. Thanks, Maria. Um, let me get my screen shared. So while the screen's popping up, what I'll be talking about today is an extension of the alternate content sources feature. Um, which is called the Simplified Alternate Content Source Type. And I won't be going over the basics of ACSs here, so if you missed my last demo, I'd say take a look at that, um, and it'll explain kind of the basis. But I'll go through some of the simple stuff here. So one of the big use cases for alternate content sources um, is being able to sync your smart proxies directly to um, upstream servers or a CDN, like the Red Hat CDN, for example. Because um, be, there are cases where um, a smart proxy might have a slow connection with the main Catello server. Um, so the use case here, if you have um, an ACS set up, you'll just sync the metadata between the smart proxy and the Catello server but then all the RPMs can get synced straight from the upstream servers. So if the upstream servers have a mirror that's closer to your smart proxy, um, then you'll get to benefit from that faster bandwidth. Um, now, this is doable with custom alternate content sources, but you have to set them up manually, and that can take a lot of time. So we created simplified ACSs, which copy content directly from your repositories. Um, so an ACS uses a remote in pulp, just like a repository does, which is where it gets all of its information from for where to sync. Um, so when we create a simplified ACS, we just copy that info right from the repository's uh, remote configuration. Um, so the URL, the uh, authentication info, which is an important one, for example, if you have um, SSL certs that you get copied over. You don't have to worry about that. That'll get um, done for you. And then any configuration or any connection configuration as well. Um, and so to use a simplified ACS, <clears throat> I'll show you in a second. But for creating, you just need a, all you have to do is choose the name, the smart proxies, and which products you want in the ACS. Um, and once you click uh, create, it'll just work magically for you. And the ACS is also update with the products. It's all automatic. So if you create a new repo, it'll get added to your ACS product. If you delete a repo, it'll get removed. Um, if you change anything about the repo, it'll get updated. If you change the, the content credentials, if you change the, um, the URL. So that'll be good. Um, one thing to note is that if uh, your product suddenly has no repositories that are useful to the ACS. Like if you have a product that has um, only file repos and one yum repo, and then you suddenly remove yum repo and you have that connected to a yum ACS, that product will be removed from the ACS um, due to how the magic works in the back end. Well, let me jump in right now to the actual demo. So I'll switch over to my foreman. Um, so I will show you how to create a simplified alternate content source. So I have a bunch of products here. I have some Red Hat ones. I have a product that I'm calling the empty product. Um, let me make sure it's actually empty, um, or at least empty of yum repositories. I'll just be showing yum today. File works the same. Um, and then my main custom product is called buttermilk biscuits. Um, and so yeah, let's jump right into it. So we also have some UI updates that I'll be sharing. Um, the UI is now pretty much complete for ACS. There's still a few things we need to add, but it's um, very useful now. Um, so I'll just X out there. You see the main alternate content sources here like you normally would. Um, and I'll get to showing later the details and editing them. So let's add a new custom ACS. You have two types here, custom, or sorry, I'll add a simplified ACS. Um, you have the custom simplified types. So you select simplified. You can pick your type. So we'll do yum. Next thing you do your source, or sorry, your name. So I'll just do simplified ACS2, since I already have one. 
And then here you can select your smart proxies. I'll select both of these. And then you just have to select which products you want. Um, so uh, if you try to select this empty product um, and then you add it, it's going to error out because that, that product had no usable YUM repos. And I think one place where we might be able to improve here is to make it so that validation happens before the wizard quits itself. Um, but anyway, that's how the error will look now. Um, but luckily, creating simplified sources is nice and easy, so it's quick to redo it. So we'll get my smart proxies and then my products. Um, so I'll just add two. I'll add my custom product, and then I'll add one of the Red Hat ones just to show. Um, because as some of you may know, Red Hat products use um, get their uh, cert information and all that from your manifest. And there's a lot of connection authentication stuff in the background. If that's all handled for you, you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, and so then we can review our details. We can see the smart proxies we've selected in our products. Um, and then once you click it, it's just easy as that to add it. Um, and let me refresh the page. So we can see our new simplified ACS. So now if we click on the simplified ACS, we can see the details in this nice panel on the side. And so the rows here are collapsible, so you can show the details or hide them. Um, we can see the basic info here, type, name, content type. We can see the smart proxies here with links. And then we also see the products. Um, and then I'll just quickly go over so we can just see the pulp tasks. Um, so we created our alternate content source here. Um, and what you'll see is you'll see tasks for ACS is created on both smart proxies. So if you'll see here, there should be, let's see, there's, yeah three sets for each uh, proxy. So let's see. I'll go to the create remote. So we can see the smart And then the other ones down here, you can see it's for smart proxy two. Um, so that was all created in pulp. You can see some of the response output that came from pulp. You can see the href, for example, of the ACS and the remote. OK, excellent. So um, the next thing we can talk about is what happens when these repositories get updated, deleted, et cetera. Um, so what I will do is I'll go back to my empty product, and I will quickly add a repo to that and then add this product to the smart to the ACS just so you can see it getting deleted. Um, and if I didn't give this an upstream URL, it would not get added to the ACS um, because, well, it wouldn't know where to refresh the ACS. Um, So we have our new repo created, so empty product is no longer empty. So we can go over to the ACS, and if you want to edit it, you just go to Edit Products. And then you see this nice dual selector pop up. You can click your empty product, and you can move it over. And then when you hit Edit, in the background, the repository will be added to the ACS. So you can see the products now, empty product is there. Um, now, however, if I go back and if I decide I no longer want this yum repo, um, it should get removed from the ACS. And because it's the last repo, it will be the pro the entire product will be removed. And this is part of this is handled as part of the repo deletion. It'll check if it's the last one, and then it'll handle the alternate content sources appropriately. Let's just check the dying flow. So we can see alternate content source 
um, it deleted two ACSs and two remotes. So that's one per smart proxy. And let's go back to our ACS here. I'll refresh. And then, so our products, we now just have two. We have uh, the original ones, and the empty one is now gone. Um, and I'll just show really quick in a little bit of the back end. So this is one of my um, alternate content sources that I created earlier. So I, an alternate content source has these smart proxy alternate content sources, which is the link between an alternate content source um, and the actual ACSs in pulp. And you can say they all have repository IDs. So there's one smart proxy ACS created per repo. And so this one, repository ID 16, is my Red Hat Ansible repository. And you can see it has a smart proxy ID of 1. And here we can see the remote href. So I just wanted to demo what the remote looks like. So if we do a pulp command with the pulp CLI, we can see that there's this whole CA cert that got copied over. Very long CA cert. <laughs> Um, and if I go to the top here, you can see the URL. It's pointing to the Red Hat CDN. Um, so that got created nicely. And then once you refresh, it'll sync directly. It'll refresh with the CDN. And then when you sync your smart proxy, it'll get the RPM straight from the CDN itself. OK, so. That is mostly what I wanted to go over for the simplified ACSs. Um, what I'll just show next is we've also added editing capabilities for custom ACSs as well. So I have a custom one that I created here. So just like the simplified, you can edit the smart proxies. You can also edit the URL and the subpaths. So you could change these if, to however you want to. If you want to remove one, you can click that, and then you can edit it. And it'll be updated for you. And you can also edit anything else, your credentials. You can select new certificates, new basic auth information um, as well. Um, and I believe that is it for what I wanted to show with simplified ACSs. If anyone ever has any questions, you can get in contact with me um, on the uh, community forums, um, and I'm always happy to ask questions. Um, my username on the community forums is ibalu. Um, that's I-B-A-L-L-O-U. And yeah, thanks a bunch. Thank you, Ian. Uh, anyone here has any questions? OK. Then we'll move to our uh, next demo for uh, content view comparison by Samir. This demo only has the uh, Catello stuff, so yeah. Samir? Hey, Maria. Go Catello. Let me share my screen. Uh, so can you see my content view version screen? Yeah, can you zoom in a bit? Yeah, great. All right. So uh, if you attended the last demo, our summer intern on the Catello team earlier presented the uh, some bits of uh, content view version comparison. So she finished her internship, but she also left us with this neat feature, which I'm demoing today. So to compare two content view versions, uh, you simply select the two, hit compare, and you should get a screen like this, and you'll get sub-tabs based on all the content types that are available between these two versions. So it will, it has a, uh, it has two columns. So since this is zoomed in, uh, yeah. So it will have checkboxes for which version actually contains that content. You can also filter by things which are different, things which are same. So for this case, we didn't have 
same stuff. You can change versions once you're on this view directly. Uh, and yeah, I think that is about all on this screen. So yeah. All right, that was all. Thank you, Samir. Anyone here has any questions? OK, great. Uh, now, Chris, with two topics on uh, Hammer's Catello, Catello's Hammer. All right, thank you. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, so with all the, uh, the simple content access stuff that's being done, uh, we've basically, there is a API that was added a while ago to check if uh, simple content access was added in a um, on an organization. And so we extended that into Hammer. So I'll show one, uh, I'll show two organizations, one that has a, man, a manifest imported and one that actually does not. So this one has a manifest imported. And so it returns yes or no. Um, and if we do it without one, it will come back and say, current organization does not have a manifest supported. Uh, the other thing I wanted to demo was, um, so a while ago, um, we didn't have a way to check um, what repos were enabled on a client. So there's a hammer product content, which will tell basically look at the repository sets, um, but it doesn't actually show what repos are enabled from a client. So Ian added this a while ago. And so basically, um, uh, we extended that into Hammer. So basically, so let me show you what that looks like here. Uh, it's a new command called enable that repositories and you pass it the host ID. And this is actually what it comes from uh, the client. Uh, so if I were to go onto my client and say, disable one of them, uh, and then if I do a DNF, any, you know, DNF profile upload, it would respond and update this list. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Chris. Anyone here has any questions about this? OK, to our uh, next and final topic, uh, Manisha. Um, thank you, Maria. Let me share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. OK, perfect. So today I'm going to talk about content view Debian filtering. So um, Yum already had that feature. So we added uh, something similar for Debian. So with that, uh, you can customize your rep Debian repositories that you have in your products and uh, customize it in content view based on the filters. Uh, 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 for example, you can filter based on names or architecture, and then you can consume those uh, repositories in content host. So let me give you a quick demo. So you can create a um, CV, CV1. You can have multiple content views or just one. So I'll just select the one. And in repositories, just select the Debian repository. And then in filters, you can add the new rule. Uh, you can filter. Um, you can. Uh, you have two options: either to include the packages or to exclude the packages. So, based on the query or, or for name or architecture, you can include those packages or ex exclude when you publish the content view. So, I'll just include uh, use the include filter. No, I think. So you have to select the content type as Debian. And then select the include filter, create filter. And here you can add various rules. For example, um, I can select all the packages with architecture AMD64. And you can see before publishing the content view, what uh, packages there will be. So earlier you saw that there were thousands of packages, around a thousand plus. Now it has just 151 and all have the architecture of AMD64. 
or you can uh, filter it based on name as well. So I can simply edit this. For example, Google. So any package that has Google and um, anything uh, after that, and then AMD uh, architecture, then it will show all these packages. So it has eight uh, packages. And then you can publish this new version and you can either promote it so it will change the lifecycle environment or you can simply publish it and then you can use it in your content host. So it takes some time. Yeah. So it has new version, uh, version 1.0. Uh, and you can see it has repository Debian 10 with eight packages. And these eight packages can be seen here. So this was about content view uh, Debian filter. We also fixed uh, some bugs regarding the Debian repositories package upload. So in uh, uh, repositories, you have two options to use the packages, either to sync them or you can manually upload them. Uh, and for Debian, when you were because of their naming, uh, there was it was not possible to upload some packages, but now it's possible. So I'll uh, show you quickly uh, how you can upload uh, a package. And uh, there is one use case as well. For example, two repositories can have same package, and in Debian it was not possible earlier, but now you can simply select the packages and click upload and it will show you three packages and it's possible that user forgets that they have uh, uploaded some package and they try to upload it again for example this one I already uploaded it before. So it won't throw error. It will show that, yes, package is uploaded, but the count will remain same because we already uploaded that package. And you can create another repository with, um, with same packages as well, and it will still uh, be able to upload the package. Example, here again, I can, Select this package. And it successfully uploads the package. So that was mainly it. Thank you so much. Any questions? Um, Uh, thank you, Manisha, and thank you, everyone, for presenting. Uh, if anyone has any questions, we are on IRC and in the forum and community forum, so you can ask questions there. And that's uh, it for this demo. Thank you.